Summary of Dr. Heidegger's Experiment by Nathaniel Hawthorne Dr. Heidegger, an old doctor who has been the subject of many wild rumors, asks four of his friends to come into his study so he can do an experiment on them. All of the friends, Mr. Medbourne, Colonel Killigrew, Mr. Gascoigne, and Widow Weisherly, are in their 70s or 80s and have had bad things said about them in some way. Also, the three men used to be fierce rivals for the love of Widow Weisherly, who was very beautiful when she was young but is now very old, just like her friends. Others think that all of them, including Dr. Heidegger, have gone a little crazy because they have been through so much in their lives. The friends are in Dr. Heidegger's dusty study, which is full of strange things like a human skeleton, a portrait of Dr. Heidegger's long-dead fiancé, a bust of Hippocrates, an enchanted mirror said to hold the souls of all of Dr. Heidegger's dead patients, and a mysterious magic book. Dr. Heidegger takes the book off the table and pulls a pressed rose from one of the pages. He says that his fiancée, Sylvia Ward, gave it to him 50 years ago, and he had planned to wear it to their wedding, but Sylvia died the day before. Dr. Heidegger puts the rose in a vase in the middle of the table where everyone is sitting. Slowly, the rose starts to come back to life until it looks like it just opened. His friends think it's a trick, but Dr. Heidegger says the water in the vase comes from the legendary fountain of youth that Ponce de Leon searched for for so long. He then tells his skeptical friends that they can drink as much of the liquid as they want and gives each of them a champagne glass. Dr. Heidegger says that he won't drink any of the liquid, but will only watch. Before the four friends drink their glasses, Dr. Heidegger tells them that they might want to make a list of general rules for themselves, since they are about to go through the perils of youth for a second time and might be able to learn something from the knowledge of old age. But Dr. Heidegger's warning makes the friends laugh, and they gulp down the water. Almost right away, they start to feel refreshed and their spirits rise. The water gives their old bodies new life and color. It also seems to smooth out some of their lines. As soon as their doubts start to go away, they ask for more, and Dr. Heidegger fills their drinks. With the second glass, the group is back to middle age, and they look a little bit drunk. Colonel Killigrew says that Widow Weisherly looks good again, so she runs to the mirror to see if he's right. Mr. Gascoigne starts to talk about politics, but it is not clear what he is saying or what year he thinks it is. Colonel Killigrew keeps himself busy by singing a drinking song and staring at Widow Weisherly. Mr. Medbourne comes up with a half-baked, crazy plan for his business. The water makes the group feel drunk, so they ask for another glass to be made. Now that they are young adults, they make fun of Dr. Heidegger's sickly and decrepit look as well as their own old-fashioned clothes, as if they had forgotten that they were also sickly and old just a few minutes ago. Dr. Heidegger is asked to dance by the widow, but he says he is too old. The other three men argue about who will dance with her. Each of them puts a hand on her and fights with the other two. The storyteller says that people say the mirror on the wall showed three sickly old men fighting over the body of a shriveled old woman instead of the four of them when they were young and healthy. When they fight, they knock over the table, which causes the vase of water to spill out. When the water hits a dying butterfly, it comes back to life and lands on Dr. Heidegger's white-haired head. Dr. Heidegger tells the four friends to stop fighting, and it's like Father Time himself is calling them back from their sunny youth. They sit back down at the table. Dr. Heidegger says that his rose has wilted again, but he thinks that he loves it just as much as when it was in full bloom. The next second, the four friends realize that they, too, seem to be getting older with each passing second. Soon, they are back to normal, and the widow says that if she can't be beautiful, she'd rather be dead. Dr. Heidegger says that watching how his friends act has shown him that he would never drink from the fountain of youth, even if it was right outside his door and its effects lasted for years. His friends, on the other hand, don't agree. They decide to go to Florida, where the fountain of youth is, and drink from it all day long. About the author. Nathaniel Hawthorne grew up in Salem, Massachusetts. He was a descendant of the very strict Puritans. When he hurt his leg as a child and had to stay in bed for a year, he learned to love books. 
He went to Bowdoin College, then worked as an editor and wrote short stories, many of which were included in his book Twice Told Tales, which came out in 1837. In 1841, he joined the utopian transcendentalist community at Brook Farm. He left that community in 1842 to marry Sophia Peabody. Hawthorne wrote a lot between 1850 and 1860. He wrote The Scarlet Letter, one of the first best-selling novels in the United States, The House of the Seven Gables, which is often thought to be his best book, The Blythdale Romance, his only work written in the first person, and The Marble Fawn, a romance set in a made-up version of Italy. In the last six years of his life, Hawthorne lived in Europe. He died in 1864. His fame in America was so high that some of the most famous writers of the time, like Ralph Waldo Emerson, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Sr., Louisa May Alcott, and Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, carried his coffin at his funeral. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.